All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your standard multimeter. A multimeter can do tons of things. It can test diodes, it can measure continuity, it can usually uh, measure, check to see if transistors are working, uh, it checks voltage, you can measure current with it, you can test frequencies with it up to, well, it depends on the multimeter, not all of them can do it, this one can up to about 20 hertz. You can test down to uh, uh, two nano farads uh, capacitance. You can test uh, uh, the inductive properties of a coil. It's a wonderful little gadget. So what this is going to do is this is going to teach you the basics behind your average multimeter. You're not going to have to memorize it. It's just something to keep in mind whenever you see your own. This is a much nicer one than some some of the ones that are lying around, but I mean. It's still not the fanciest you can come across. Uh, so for starters, unless you're measuring current, you usually have settings. Com, as you can see where the black probe is connected to, com stands for common ground. And uh, uh, usually you want to have the red one connected to in, in the voltage line, V, unless you're measuring for current, but we're going to talk about that maybe a little bit later. For the time being, we're just going to worry about, about our settings. So. So our positive probe and our negative probe, and I'll tell you when you're measuring something whether you'll want to uh, where, where where it really matters which one you're actually measuring. So if you look on here, you might notice there's my diode tester. You can test a diode by placing the uh, uh, if you watched my diode and capacitor video, which I hope you have. Um, if you place the you know you know a diode is working if you put it on that setting by placing the red probe at the anode and the black probe at the cathode of, of a diode and if it beeps then it's working. I'll, however, if you place them in opposite order, if you place the red probe at the cathode and the black probe at the anode and it beeps, then there's something wrong with your diode. Here is my continuity tester and as you can see here there's actually a little sound indicator. If I turn it on and uh, if I turn this on to say my continuity tester and that's 200 ohms or less and I touch there's less than 200 ohms across there so that's check just is our are the circuits connected where they should be now if you want to measure between 0 and 2000 ohms of resistance say a, a resistor then you uh, you test the resistor along this point you set it to the low setting of of 2k and the reason for this is if I get a, a resistor that's uh, that's say 1.5k and I put it on the 20 meg setting it won't pick it up because there's only so many digits on the screen so again if I'm measuring over 2k uh, between 2k and 20k then I'm going to want to set it to the 20k or else I'm not going to get a, a, a very accurate reading you want to get if you're measuring something you expect it to be between a certain point then it's always best to get it on the right setting so I'll do an example right now if you just hold on for one second so I've got a 10k resistor in my hand so I've got it on the 20k setting resistors it doesn't matter they don't have polarities now it's kinda of hard to uh, to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim the uh, I'm going to aim my camera down. So, just give me one second. There we go. Gosh, darn it. So I've got it on my 20k setting. Doesn't matter which polarity I set it at, because it doesn't matter with the resistors. So I'll place one probe. They say you never, it's never, you never get a good reading if you're, especially if it's a low, res, if it's a high resistance of a, of a of a resistor, if you're touching it. So by rule, don't ever touch it because you'll you won't get the best, especially if it's a really high because your body's resistance. You can actually measure your body's resistance. So I'll do that in one second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the table. Please watch the multimeter head and tell you how to see what it reads. Don't want it to get in the uh, in the light there. measures almost 10k. Now resistors have tolerances 
And what a tolerance means is it has a plus or minus value. So this is a 5%, uh, has a 5% tolerance, which means it will be not exactly 10K, but it'll be within plus or, five, or minus 5% of it. Uh, now, if you want to read, if you want to read, list, you'll have to buy my lesson on on resistors, but uh, it's uh, well worth it. You can actually find it if you can understand it on your own just by reading a textbook. Um, you can read the color codes of a resistor and learn how to just look at it and understand what it means. But for the time being, we're just going to talk about how to use the multimeter. So I hope that makes. If we're if you want to measure your own your body's resistance, you probably want to start at the highest. So this is 20 megs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down there so you can read what it says. I'm pulling it in the lower left hand corner because there's a glare in the room. I'm putting both my fingers on, uh, one of my fingers on each of the LEDs. I'm putting my thumbs on it. So my body's resistance, I can get a better reading if I bring it down to the 2 meg. Because my body, it says, it's a reading that my body is around 1.5 mega ohms of resistance. So I'll bring it down to the 2 mega ohm setting. It'll give me a more accurate reading. Or it won't. <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm sorry. I put it on the I put it on the wrong setting. This is the right one. Okay, so I'm on the, I'm on the the two mega ohm setting. So I've got about a half a mega ohm uh, resistance through my body. So that's quite a bit of resistance. But if I was to measure a one mega ohm resistor, I'm in parallel with it. So why not why not try to measure one? I'm sure I've got one around here somewhere. Ah, here we go. So I'm going to touch both leads and we're going to see what happens. This is a one mega ohm resistor. See? Changes. This should be a one mega ohm, but I, my body's in parallel with it. Now if I measure it without touching the leads, just by touching the leads with the probes and not my hands, you got one mega ohm resistance. So try never to touch it. Because you're always putting your body in parallel with it. Now, if you're measuring a 10, you know, a 10 k ohm resistor and you're putting your half mega ohm uh, resistance in parallel with it, it's not really going to affect it much, but it's going to affect it a little bit. So let's go on with this. Now we can bring it down into voltage. Now with voltage, hmm, bring the lights on. Sorry guys. Okay. So same thing goes for for voltage. It starts off at 200. The first setting is 200 millivolts, second is 2 mill 2 volts, third is 20 volts, third is 200 volts, uh, fourth is 1000 volts or 700 volts AC. Now you have to put on the AC setting here. If you want it to go from a DC to AC, you have to press this button. Now I'm going to see if we can get it up close. AC, as you can see, is a squiggly line, whereas DC is the straight line with three dots underneath it. So this is, there's a there are fuses in the back. You don't want to you don't want to measure something. It's got settings inside, so you don't want to measure 400 millivolts on a 200 volts 200 millivolt setting, or else you could blow the fuse. Same goes for the two volt setting. If you have measuring five volts in the two volt setting, you're likely going to blow your fuse. Same with 20, 40 volts on the 20 volt, 400 volts on the on the 200 volt. If you never, you never want. You want to make sure that you always compensate. So if I'm measuring five volts, I know it's going to be no bigger than five volts. I'll set it to the 20 volt setting. But if I know that if I'm measuring a a, a, a voltage that I think is going to be between 170 volts and 230 volts, I'm not going to set it to the 200 volt one. I'm going to set it to the to the 1000 volts and make sure that it's set to the DC setting and not to the AC setting. Now I'll show you something pretty cool. Um, okay, I'm not sure if I can I can show you right now, but what I, what I would do, uh, I'm actually plugged into the wall right now, so what I can do, and I don't suggest doing this at home just because it's just not something you do. But what you can do is uh, check and make sure it's for AC. And some, some can't measure AC. Some of these multimeters can't. Most of them can't. Put on the highest setting and you can actually measure 120 volts coming from your, uh, from your wall outlet. Now please don't heat it to do that. 
don't heed my advice because it's not advice. I sincerely hope you don't do that, but it shouldn't hurt the multimeter. At least not a half decent multimeter. So now the next setting, I'm going to set, you, set it back to DC, is basically a frequency counter. So if I plug that into the wall, or I would, I actually wouldn't do that with this because I don't, I'm not 100% sure about this one whether it can hold high voltage well on that setting. You can test and not get a very accurate reading, but you can still test uh, signals up to 20 kilohertz, which really isn't very high. Uh, it's, it's within the, uh, it's just at the top of the audio range, so you wouldn't use that very often. Now, if you were going to measure these lower uh, units are for current. So if we ever want to measure current, we got to bring this thing over here. And same thing goes for for current is voltage. You know, you always want to compensate. You want to make sure that you you're uh, you're not going to blow a fuse because you will blow a fuse when you're measuring current. Now we haven't talked about how you'd measure current in a circuit. Uh, we will later on. We might even at the end of this lesson if you stay and watch until the end. But if you measure any more than 200 millivolts and you, you're, you're making very careful to overcompensate because you don't want to blow a fuse, you actually have a special node for the 10 amp uh, measurement. Because that's a lot of current and you're heavily in the danger zone when you're measuring stuff in, the, in, the, in that area. So it's got its own special fuse. If you can see right here on this one, you can actually measure uh, capacitors put the capacitors in there as long as you have your uh, setting on the right more appropriate remember uh, uh, setting for the uh, uh, value of, of uh, capacitor you're, you're measuring if you think it's between uh, 200 nano and, and 2 micro you're not going to really blow anything here but it's got a setting no matter, no matter what to get the, you know, to get the best reading because if, if you're measuring something that's 40 nano, when you measure on the or uh, on the two nano, you're not going to measure it. Whereas if you're measuring something near the two nano and you're on the 20 nano setting, you're going to screw yourself out of a few decimal places. You're not going to get the most accurate reading you can. So what else do you have to do? So some of them, I'd actually have to press that else LXCX in. Sorry, I'm not sure if it's, it's having trouble. There we go, focused. You'd press that in, and then you'd put your put your capacitor in there in those two holes. So here's the, uh, and I never ever use this, not really anyway, it's the, uh, you'd have to push this in again for in measuring in the inductive properties of a coil. We haven't talked about inductors and we won't for a while because you don't need to use them as often. You use them sometimes at filters, you can use them, you can use them here or there, but we won't be focusing too much on coils, but the same principle goes for coil. Always measure it and make sure you have, you have the, uh, the unit in the proper setting for what you think it's going to be measured in. If you, if you don't really know what you're measuring, always start at the highest and bring yourself down if that's a last resort. Now this one actually comes with a temperature sensor you can plug in down here. Uh, here. You can put if you can put the temperature sensor on there and you can touch something to the temperature sensor and it'll tell you uh, the, the, the temperature on there. Now I haven't used that because I haven't really found a use for it. Uh, this has, also has an option of putting a light on so you can see it in the dark. You can't see it in this light. Um, hold is basically just, just keeps uh, whatever's on your multimeter held there. Like so, so if you take the leads off, the measurement will still stay. And yeah, so that's the multimeter. Now I'm going to go for a quick, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick tutorial on how to measure current and that'll be it. It's a short lesson. So just give me one second. Okay, so you don't have to measure it very more often. It's better just to, to calculate it, estimate it. Uh, okay, let's say we've got, and I don't suggest doing this unless you're feeling adventurous because if you don't do it right, you might blow the fuse on your multimeter. So don't do it unless you have to. And if you have to, start do, do try lower currents as opposed to higher currents. So if you've got a nine volt battery, try putting a, 10k resistor. So calculate. First thing is to always calculate out what the current is going to be. Remember, E or uh, I equals E over R. So 
equals 9 volts over 10,000, which is equal to 900 mi micro, or 0 0.0009 amps, which isn't very much. You could probably still stand to go a bit higher than that, but it's okay. So if you want to measure, remember in a series circuit, if you want to measure the if you want to measure the current process, what you have to do is you can basically disconnect it. Place your red probe here and your black probe here. And make sure you have it on the appropriate setting. And then connect the power and you'll measure the current in the, in the electrons well, in amperes between those two points. Now, that's, I only add that in because it's something that you should know. This is electronics that's supposed to get you into it, to, into hobbyist. You don't have to know and do all the stuff I say. Uh, and you might still have a lot of questions based on what I say. But this is supposed to get you started. And just to, uh, I, think I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll do... I'll do one more... One more, uh, one more theory lesson, and then we'll get started on some really cool stuff, okay? Thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope that I got your attention. I hope, this isn't, I hope that it's worth your dollar. Thanks again.